there, future nurse. Now, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I bet you'll like this video. And if you do, be sure to head to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube for way more content than you can get here. And you can sign up for free. Welcome to Pharmacology in Practice, where we bring real life patient case studies to help you better understand and remember key pharmacological concepts. In this video, we'll explore different drugs and dive into detailed patient scenarios to see how they're really used in clinical practice. Let's start with statin medications, which are commonly prescribed for managing high cholesterol levels and reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. Statins work by inhibiting an enzyme called CoA reductase, which play a critical role in production of cholesterol in the liver. By lowering cholesterol levels, particularly low-density lipoprotein, the LDLs, which I call the loser lipids, or basically that bad cholesterol, statins help prevent the build of a plaque inside the arteries, reducing the risk of heart attacks and even strokes. One of the most widely used statins is rosuvastatin, known by its brand name, Crestor. But let's put this into action to better understand real-life application of rosuvastatin. Meet John, a 58-year-old patient with a family history of heart disease. During his annual physical exam, John's blood work revealed his elevated LDL cholesterol levels, despite following a healthy diet and even exercise routine. His physician recommended rosuvastatin to better control his high cholesterol levels and reduce his risk of cardiovascular events. So John was prescribed a daily dose of 10 milligrams PO of rosuvastatin and advised to continue his lifestyle modifications, which is really hard to do. Now, at his follow-up visit, three months later, John's LDL levels had significantly improved, and he reported no major side effects from the medication. So that's a good thing. This scenario illustrates the use of rosuvastatin in managing high cholesterol, especially when lifestyle changes alone are insufficient, and the patient has an increased risk of cardiovascular complications. But what if John's 10 milligram dose did not improve the LDL levels? For example, what if John's labs showed his LDL levels had improved, but were still above the target range for some of his risk factors? His provider may consider prescribing a higher dose of that rosuvastatin to achieve the optimal cholesterol control. After discussing the potential benefits and side effects, John's provider decides to increase the rosuvastatin dose to 20 milligrams per day and advises him to monitor for any muscle aches or even liver enzyme elevation, which is a big side effect for higher doses of statin. So, at this visit, he's also reminded to maintain a healthy diet, like dog on McDonald's, exercise regularly, like those Zumba classes, and even take other medications prescribed alongside the increased prosuvastatin dose. Together, these measures aim to further reduce John's risk factors for heart disease and even stroke by getting his cholesterol levels in that desired range. This scenario perfectly illustrates how sometimes an increased statin dose is necessary especially for patients who are not achieving their cholesterol goals on the initial dose. Next, let's discuss adenosine, a medication used to treat certain types of abnormal heart rhythms, specifically supraventricular tachycardia. Simply think a super fast heart rate with supraventricular tachycardia. Adenosine works by slowing down the conduction through the AV node, or the atrioventricular node, which is the electrical connection between the atria, the upper chambers, and the ventricles, the lower chambers of the heart. This can help restore a normal heart rhythm in patients with SVT. So with adenosine, simply think a downazine. It puts the heart rate down. Now let's dive into another patient scenario. Meet Sarah, a 42-year-old patient who arrived to the emergency department with palpitations, chest discomfort, and shortness of breath. Oh my gosh, she might be having a heart attack. An ECG or electrocardiogram revealed that Sarah was experiencing an episode of SVT, the heart rate over 180 beats per minute. Dang, that's high. Now, after establishing IV access and continued cardiac monitoring, the emergency provider administered a rapid intravenous push of 6 milligrams of adenosine. Within seconds, Sarah's heart rhythm converted to a normal sinus rhythm, and her symptoms resolved. Woo, that was a close one. This scenario showcases the use of adenosine as a rapid-acting medication to restore a normal heart rhythm in patients presenting with specific types of tachyarrhythmias, such as SVT. Now you can see by connecting pharmacological concepts with relatable patient case studies, we hope that you better understand and remember the indications and even mechanism of action, as well as clinical applications of these medications. So stay tuned for more Pharmacology in Practice videos, where we'll continue to bring pharmacology to life through engaging patient scenarios. Remember, nursing students, understanding pharmacology is essential for providing safe and effective care for your future patients. Keep learning and exploring these real-world applications 
to become a confident and knowledgeable healthcare professional. Thanks for watching today's video. Remember to type simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube into your search bar and join well over 1 million students hacking their nursing school system.